Hi, you're here today at ISNTD D3. It's the Drug Discovery and Diagnostics Conference by the International Society for Neglected Tropical Diseases. Uh, a very warm welcome to you, uh, Ignacio Willets. Um, you're here today, you're representing Hack Science. And uh, could you let us know exactly what is Hack Science and uh, what are the main objectives of the project? Sure. Um, Hack Science is a startup that uh, came from Imperial College. And our mission is to accelerate the world's scientific research with affordable and novel lab automation. So that mission came from a realization that scientists uh, across the world uh, in biotech and academic research spend a huge amount of their time doing manual processes which aren't necessarily contributing to uh, you know, their work in a, in a meaningful way. So we thought this was a really uh, <clears throat> meaningful and, and, and big problem that we should be solving. So do you focus specifically on tropical diseases or are your, is your approach kind of transferable to any sort of challenges? So it's an interesting question. We actually started with um, uh, our first sort of user test and our first sort of user base was uh, people doing malaria research um, and you know, automating the, the uh, cell cultivation process uh, for um, those specific kind of cell cultures. Um, but we actually found out you know, this is actually really a ubiquitous challenge. Uh, so not just the, the media replenishment, but the cell counting, all these kind of things are, are challenges that are faced across um, uh, areas of research uh, from tropical diseases to things like stem cell research. So it's actually a broad range of, of science that we can apply to. Wow, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, and are, are you launching kind of, is there a concrete tool or process that you go through or um, do you develop that in consultation with, with, with each um, scientist? How, how does one go about sort right. of working with you? Sure. So um, we are very user focused. So we did a survey um, just under a year ago of over 100 scientists and we asked, uh, well we asked them firstly how much time in the lab they spend on manual processes which they wish could be automated. And you know, if you look at chemists they spend quite a long time on manual processes. Uh, but if you looked at people doing sort of bio-research, it was you know, so heavily skewed to the right that it was really quite scary. Uh, and then we basically asked everyone uh, who was spending a high proportion of time on manual processes what those processes were. And the top three were cell culturing, um, cell counting, and a process called Western blotting. So those are actually the three things that we're going to be developing first. Um, and the way we work with organizations and labs is we will be, we work very closely to them, with them to understand their needs. So working with a few labs across London uh, to develop the media, automated media replenishment tool, CellFeed, which automates media replenishment cell cultures, um, but also now starting to work with a few more labs on the imaging part of things. So anyone who basically still has to come in the weekend to look after the cells or is you know, spending a lot of time um, doing the very basic stuff, those are people that we'd love to speak to. Well, that's absolutely brilliant, and perhaps we could just flash your contact details up on screen and yeah. encourage anyone <laughs> that would be amazing <laughs> that when this rings a bell to kind of get in touch with totally, you. Totally, yeah. Um, so, are there specific partners now that you kind of would like to approach, or that you're looking for now that you've established quite a few of these relationships with specific labs? Is there a direction you're looking to, to sure. expand? Sure. Um, Mainly more, more labs, um, you know, more labs in specific areas uh, or, or just areas that we're not looking at so we can get a sort of broader scope on, on, on where we can help. Um, we are, you know, looking to collaborate with people who might want to go for funding together or want to publish something because actually what uh, we've realised is it's not just about saving time but we can actually optimise processes. So, you know, a lot of the reasons people do things on the current schedule is because that's just the minimum you have to do. But it's still quite painful for humans to do that every day, but we could actually do it continuously because the robot doesn't complain. Um, so, you know, anyone who is looking to maybe put a bit of uh, research out there which looks at how we can optimise processes, that would be really interesting as well. That's absolutely fantastic. And uh, finally, you're here today at a drug discovery uh, and diagnostics conference. Within that sphere, are there specific ideas that you've had or, or you know, partnerships that you've sort of talked about that, that might be, that might develop into something in, in the near future? Yeah, so uh, last time I was here, um, we were speaking with uh, people from the Natural History Museum and, you know, what's, what's really obvious, uh, especially in, in sort of tropical diseases, is that, you know, the funding situation is a bit of a challenge, right? Um, and actually, when you talk about some of the technology we're developing, this could actually unlock 
some of the work they, well, they're hoping to do, um, but can't do because maybe they don't have the data. So you have this chicken and egg problem um, where you want to go for the funding, but you can't get the data. But uh, to get the data, you need the funding, right? Um, but we're looking at maybe unlocking some, some aspects of work which uh, could get them that data and then hopefully get them the funding they need. So uh, there's a few sort of ideas we're floating around and uh, product iterations um, that you might be see coming out uh, over the next year or so. Well, that's brilliant news, and we'll watch this space. And cool. uh, anything that can save resources uh, is, is always very welcome. So thanks Amazing. for explaining that. And um, we, we hope that you'll get a lot of positive feedback and uh, people getting in touch with you. Great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for your time, Ignatius.